Hi, in this video, we're looking at Boyle's Law. Boyle's Law is one of the three major gas laws. This one relates pressure of a gas to its volume. And so I want to start with this visual here. This is a closed container. Um, so we can label that as closed. That means we're not going to gain or lose any gas particles when we change the pressure or the volume. But uh, in a second, I'm going to move this piston down. Let's say this is a syringe or some sort of container that has a movable piston within it. Um, when I compress these particles, I'm increasing the pressure. And you'll notice that the, the font size of the P is increasing. But I do that because I'm decreasing the volume. And if you think about this for a second, it makes sense. Pressure is the force per area. And so when we think about a closed uh, gas, we're thinking about these gas particles hitting the walls of the container. If they're hitting the walls of the container more often, um, or if more particles are exerting a greater force in the same amount of area, that means pressure has increased. And so when volume decreases, as it just did in this case, pressure increases. And the opposite is true as well. And so we have this algebraic expression for Boyle's Law. The one and the two just represent the situation. Here's the first situation of a gas. Say you blow up a balloon and you tie it off. You can measure the volume of that balloon. You can also measure the pressure of the balloon. But then situation two might be, well, what happens if you try to compress the balloon? The pressure should change as the volume has changed if you're compressing it. And so you can kind of think of this as like before the change and then this other side as after some sort of change. Now, when we're multiplying pressure times volume on one side and pressure times volume, the volume on the other side, that's uh, reflective of an indirect relationship. In order for this to stay equal, imagine a one here and a one here. If I double the pressure, make this a two, in order for two times something to be equal to one, this volume is gonna have to decrease. It's gonna have to be half. Um, and so that's where this mathematical kind of expression comes from where we're multiplying the two variables together. Now let's do an example problem. Uh, this is one where I actually have a picture here from my lab. I set up a syringe. You can kind of see the, the piston of the syringe is at the 10 millimeter mark. Um, and I've hooked this up to a gas pressure sensor. The pressure sensor is reading that the pressure in the syringe is 100.77 kilopascals. So that's what I have written out here. 10.0 milliliters of air is sealed in a syringe at 100.77 100.77 kPa. When the volume increases, so I'm going to pull that syringe piston back to 20 milliliters, as close as I can. What's the new pressure? Well, before we play this video to see what happens, let's try to calculate what the new pressure should be. And that pressure is going to pop up on the, the screen there. Well, I want to start with P1V1 equals P2V2. And then I want to pick my beginning side as P1 and V1. Truthfully, mathematically, it doesn't matter if I put the information on P2V2 side. Uh, I'm still going to get the same result. Um, 10 milliliters is my first volume, so I'll put in 10.0 for V1. Then for P1, I'm going to put in this 100.77. Uh, I'm trying to calculate the new pressure, so P2 I'll leave as P2. And the new volume, it says, is going to be 20.0. And so the way to figure out P2 is just to divide both sides of this equation by 20. And if you look closely, what you'll see is 10 over 20 is half. And that means if the pressure or if the volume is doubling, the pressure should be cut in half. So I'm taking 100.77 times 10 over 20. And I get 50.3. Uh, 8.5. I want to keep five significant. No, no, I want to keep three significant figures here. So 50.4. So uh, the new pressure P2 is 50.4 kilopascals, or at least pretty close to it. So let's see what happens in real life. I'm going to take this uh, syringe here, pull it back to the 20 line, and if we're looking at the screen in the background there, it looks like 52.1 ish. 52.1. Uh, pretty close. I mean, it's within a reasonable margin of error. Um, one of the things to consider is that this seal right here is not airtight. Um, and so if I was maybe to tape that off, uh, that would help me get a more accurate reading. Another thing to think about is that the, uh, the piston line here is relatively inaccurate. 
Um, and so that's just kind of another thing to, uh, to consider. But qualitatively, it essentially was cut in half. A 50.4 KPA, we ended up with 52 KPA. It's, it's within a reasonable range of being uh, a, a good conclusion for that test for Boyle's Law. So that's it. That's what Boyle's Law is. It's as pressure goes up, volume goes down, or as pressure goes down, volume goes up. It's an indirect relationship. And it's gonna be one of the three gas laws we'll look at. Eventually, we're gonna combine these gas laws all together into what's creatively called the combined gas law. So stay tuned for that. Thank you.